Hi, and thanks for watching this introduction to Tajima DG15 by Pulse. A new monogramming wizard has been added to DG15, which lets you easily create impressive monograms using predefined templates. You can select how you want your letters to be arranged on the left here. And then, you can type in your initials. From here, you can personalize the monogram further by selecting the thread colors, picking the font you want to use, and defining the height of each line of font. You can change your decors just by clicking on them and picking a new one from the variety of decors available. You can also change the frames by picking the frame from a variety of different ones available. So in this case, I would like to use the frame without any decors. You can see now that we have a beautiful monogram which has been created quickly and easily. Lettering is a part of the software where a lot of work has been done, and very useful features have been integrated. We have even included some basic automation functions in DG15. When we make a text selection, we often want the text to stay within a specific area and I have marked here. However, in cases like uniform creation for corporate clients, sometimes the text is too long to fit. In this case, my lettering will be coming outside of the space that I want it to be. To fix this, I can come to lettering and under shrink to fit, I can choose whatever I want to compress the width, the height, or to compress both. My problem has been resolved automatically. Another very useful feature to our users is the ability to click on individual letter in DG15 and choose a different thread color and instantly apply the colors you want to apply to specific letters. In DG15, you also have the ability to create vertical lettering. As you'll see here, the letters will be placed vertically on the line drawn. In addition, once I have created the text, I can move each individual letter along the vertical line just by pulling and dragging. During the digitizing process, sometimes you'll need to align one segment to another. We've improved this process in DG15 by allowing the user to decide the position of the object in relation to the selected design. In our second segment, we'll use more specific measurements to align the object by defining the exact vertical and horizontal distance I want the object from the base object. Now, every time I move the segment, the objects I aligned it to will follow and remain the same distance apart. This feature is very useful for logos, where the spacing of certain elements has to be exact. Advanced Duplicate has been added to our duplication function, which allows us to adjust the number of rows and columns that will be created, as well as the direction that they'll appear in. We'll switch to the Advanced tab here so we can define the columns, if they are to the left or right, and define the rows if they are above or below the original design. We can also set the vertical distance and the horizontal distance between each duplicate. As you can see, clicking OK will automatically generate the desired results. One of the biggest updates in DG15 is the way you'll edit anchor points. In DG15, the user has the ability to insert anchors before or after a selected anchor point at any time, which allows you to fix an incomplete design or reshape an existing digitized design. As you can see here, I'm coming back to an unfinished design and can simply continue adding anchors in order to correct my shape.
Another useful function is the ease with which I can change from a curve anchor point to a straight anchor. It can now be done with just a click, which allows me to quickly adjust the line style I want to use for a specific design. Selective outline is another interesting feature that has been added to DG15. Instead of applying an outline to a whole complex fill area, I can just click on the complex fill area or the segment I want to add a selective outline to, click on the selective outline tool, and set my start and finish points here. The software will automatically generate an outline around the segment I have selected and in the specific area I wanted the outline. DG15 users now have the ability to apply waves on any complex fill segment. For example, we can select our complex fill here, which looks like a simple straightforward tatami segment at the moment. However, just by selecting the wave effect, we immediately have a completely new design effect. We can apply this effect to any other part of the design as well to create new and impressive patterns. One of the new stitch types added in DG15 is the complex modifier. I just have to select this segment here, convert it to a complex modifier, apply it in the stitch type, and you will see the difference when sewing it out. The complex fill is being embroidered and the stitches inside are changing appropriately. With the use of the complex modifier, I can apply a large number of combinations to an existing segment. For example, I could change from a carved tile to a standard fill type, pick up a different pattern style, and automatically change the appearance of my embroidery. When your design is complete and ready to be sewn out, you can take advantage of DG15's new machine integration features to ensure that your operator receives proper instructions and order information for the specific design. By selecting Design Properties and clicking on the Production tab, we can enter messages to be displayed to the machine operators before and after the design has been sewn. Simply enable the message and type the instructions you want the machine operator to follow for this design. When the operator loads the file to sew, the message will appear on your machine controller, as seen here. In this menu, you can also set the max RPM for the design for quality control purposes. This ensures that an operator can increase the speed of the machine to a point at which product quality may suffer. The communication with graphics systems is something that's very important to us and to our users, and Pulse Microsystems is the pioneer of this technology. So one of the things we can do in DG15 is communicate directly with CorelDRAW. As you can see, from the CorelDRAW window I have been transferred to the embroidery window within my design and it's now converted to stitches. Now I would like to cut apart some of the design to show that any editing in one program will be reflected in the other. So I could take my slice tool and I could slice the segment here. The segment has been sliced and I have generated a new design, which I will now bring back to CorelDRAW. As you can see, here we have a new graphic design, which has been exported from my embroidery window to my CorelDRAW window. Once again, thank you for watching our introduction to Tajima DG15 by Pulse. For more information about DG15, go to embroidery.pulsemicro.com.